everyone welcome back to my channel so um what a perfect opportunity then to wear my halloween disney land spirit jersey for the occasion since we are in the month of october and it's halloween that spooky time of the year so on today i'm going to be showing you guys a very very rough look at my halloween decor in my home so we are hosting a housewarming slash halloween party at our home on in a couple of days a lot of these pieces i have either one made myself um, from random parts that i bought at the store uh two uh some of the items were store bought i didn't alter them in any way i'm just using them as decoration and three a lot of them came from 99 cent store or dollar tree so definitely take advantage of trying to always you know decorate on a budget so let's take a look let's now i do want you guys to keep in mind that a lot of this stuff would look a lot better at night because right now it's uh, mid-afternoon so the sun is out so a lot of the decorations are not going to look that tremendously amazing because they are in the light well, i have a lot of stuff that's battery operated but i won't be able to show you that until so when night arrives i will show you all how it looks illuminated you are about to tag along as i show you around the house and some of the decorations that i have made now i do apologize again in advance the house is messy i have a lot of stuff strewn out around the living room and on the couches so i'm gonna try and film around that stuff but just as an fyi it's a mess hope you guys enjoy let me know what you guys think what do you guys do for Halloween? How early do you start decorating? I started as early as late September, like the last week. Let me know what your favorite Halloween stores are. Where do you guys shop? Is there a specific time that you like to put up your decorations? Is there a specific theme? Is it like all pumpkins, witches? Is it like dead stuff? Is it Day of the Dead? Whatever you guys want to let me know, comment below. And let's take a look.
So for this month, it's October, and October is my dad's birthday. So we ended up taking him to go eat. He loves eating at El Ranchito Avila. There are a few locations here in Southern California, but he prefers the one located in Huntington Park in Los Angeles. So we did take him. Uh, we do it every year. We always take out my dad, and then we always take out my mom when it's their birthdays. So we did that and we celebrated, we spent some time together. You had the opportunity to see my cousin, um, Steve Esteban Cervantes, he's my cousin. Um, from my dad's side, he was in LA for a day or two, so he also tagged along and came with us to celebrate my dad. So it was fun, it was sweet, it was family time that was well needed. yummy food from the restaurant um, every time I go to a Mexican restaurant I usually always just stay with safe choices so it would be like carne asada like this or like an enchilada plate I usually um, just stick to the same favorites So it's it's kind of difficult. The relationship that I have with my dad is different than if you were to ask me possibly um, two or three years ago. So when I came out, I was 18 years old. And the very first person that I told was my brother. Um, I only have one other sibling and that's my older brother. I am the youngest, so it's just the two of us. And he was the first person that I opened up to about being gay. And I remember it fresh in my mind. He was in his room. I went in and asked him if we could talk. I had just decided that it was about time that I came out to at least someone in my family. And it was just a really hard process because you go through so many emotions of feeling that you're gonna be rejected. You don't know exactly what is going on in their mind, what they're thinking. Um, you don't know that you're gonna get support. So it was just like a really hard time for me. So I decided it was about time to come out and just talk to my brother, ask him what he thought, you know, ask for advice if I should open up to the rest of the family, to my parents, and it was just, it was a stepping stone. Just trying to figure out what to do next, and I wanted to have someone to be able to support me um, and get advice from another 
viewpoint of what I should do. So my brother was the very first person that I came out to and I talked to him, nothing happened. He told me in a very sarcastic voice, dude, I already knew. So I'm like, okay, it went well. He didn't judge me. He accepted me for who I was and I was able to feel more comfortable knowing that I had the support for him. So the next person I ended up opening up to was my mom. Now, me and my mom are super close. We are like this. I literally tell her everything from all my problems to my stressors to my how my day was, how work is, how my relationship is with Joe. Just literally, I'm an, I'm an open book with her. She is one of my best friends. So I was very worried about what she was going to say. Um, same thing, I ended up opening up to her right after my brother that same night, same day. I went to her and I told her, Mom, I need to talk to you. Sé que me amas mucho y no me vas a juzgar. Esto espero. Necesito decirte algo. So, you know, I was telling her how much I love her and that I needed to talk to her about something important. So I ended up telling her straight out like mom i'm gay i like boys and i hope that you are okay with that so my mom took it very interestingly first she looks at me in this like laughing smiley face there was no shock there was no sign of like that her heart stopped beating or anything she was okay, she was fine, she started laughing, which I don't know why, but she just started laughing. She started smiling and asking me, Pero como? No entiendo como si yo tuve un niño. So it's kind of like more of a, it was kind of like a shocker slash comic, comedic in a way? I, I can't really explain it but she was just she wasn't upset she wasn't shocked she was more of a middle of like like a it just opened up her eyes and she laughed with it so she was a little bit in denial at first but she was okay she ended up saying you know you are my son te quiero Siempre te voy a querer, and you are who you are. So she did accept me, but it was a little bit difficult for her in the beginning because, she, of course, no parent may think in their mind that their son may be gay or not. You know, a parent never questions that until later in life. Once they start seeing how their child is, is when the questions start to arise. So she was very adamant about me coming out to my dad. So. My dad was actually the last person that I came out to and for him it was a little bit more difficult. He comes from a very hardcore Mexican family. He's from Guadalajara, Jalisco. So it was just in his DNA that he was like the old macho type, the old Mexican macho type. So it was just very difficult because my mom knew, my brother knew, I disclosed it to my very close cousin, Yvette. She's one of my closest, closest cousins, and she knew. A few other family members knew, so my dad was literally the last person to find out. And he was not very happy because apparently there was problems with family talking in the back, saying, you know, trying to expose me without me telling my dad for myself. I wanted it to come from me and no one else, but rumors were flying around about what I was and my dad would defend me on point saying that no, my son is not that. My son is straight. He would put anyone down who brought up that suggestion or idea that I was. But when I did finally come out to him, um, the reason why I came out to him was because I had already met Joe. So me and Joe had met and 
we had been dating and we had been going on for a month already of dating so we wanted to take the next step which was to meet our parents i know that's kind of quick it's quick it might be to you guys it might sound like it's a very quick process but i can't really explain it but gay and i can't speak for lesbians or or bi's or any other um LGBT community members because I am not that but I know for gay men usually things tend to escalate a lot faster I don't know if it's for everyone else but in our case it was we dated for a month and we met each other's parents maybe between month two and three of into our relationship but that's a whole nother story for a whole nother segment about how we met and so I told my dad eventually and he was shocked. He was very in denial. He was very upset. Not to the point that he was angry and yelling and screaming, but he was just very to himself. He didn't talk to me. He didn't say anything. He just, the very last thing he told me that night that I told him was, I always knew, but I didn't want to admit it to myself. So it was a little hurtful. It was sad because I had gotten the support of everybody, but obviously your parents are gonna be the most important out of everyone, your mom and your dad and your siblings. So my dad did not fully accept the fact that I was gay. And it took him a while to come to terms with it, to accept me for who I am. And now I can say that I have a good relationship with him because it definitely was not at that point and it lasted for over a few months where it was just very awkward between us both we didn't really talk to each other um, of course he would say hi hi dad hi son but it just was not in the point of where i wanted our relationship to be and it was a little bit more harder because joe was not in the picture so joe wanted to have that relationship with my dad and be able to bond with my parents both of them so it just made it a little bit difficult at times too but we pulled through so spending time with my dad and my family for his birthday was just very important for me just because it's the one time that we do get to connect as a family you know everybody being there now that i live on my own with joe we have our own place and I know it can be a little bit hard for my parents. They still have my brother. My brother still lives um, with my parents at our home where we grew up. But I know it's a lot harder for them now that we um, have our own place and they know that I'm not, I'm not growing up under the same roof as I was. So it was a very nice break. Joe hadn't been with me for a while he had been working non-stop and he hadn't really had the chance to go and spend time with my family so it was a nice little get together that we both all had and enjoyed so a little bit about myself um well a lot of people say that i am a dreamer so i would describe myself almost like cinderella why it's like a dream a wonderful dream come true and I've also been known to be overly dramatic and I can best say that's best described as Soraya Montenegro from Mariela del Barrio. I don't know if I'm being a little too dramatic, saying that I'm dramatic as dramatic as her, but I think it's the best and funniest way to just connect it. And then I've been also described as being a little bit nasty, rude, and for other terms that's appropriate for this time of the season, being a little witchy. Yeah. A little witchy, like... Best described as from the Devil Wars Prada. What kind of skirts do you use? Please bore someone else with your questions. And I, I am absolutely, absolutely a romantic at heart. I just 
am in love with the idea of being in love. I love the feeling. I love just everything about it. I'm such a dreamer and lover. Like, I am such a huge romantic. I, my husband can speak for me. I always used to do such amazing details for him when we were dating and it's just, I love it. It's, I easily, easily, easily fall in love. I always do. Every time when I was dating, like I would literally fall in love with the person within like meeting them. So I'm a helpless, helpless romantic. And I would probably best describe that as me being like Helga from Hey Arnold. And if you know that, that is some intense love. Oh, Arnold, so discriminating, so patient and thoughtful. I'm also a very emotional person. I cry at every sad movie. I just, I'm a very emotional person when it comes to stories about people, about animals. Oh my gosh, I, I just break down. I'm like so crazy. I mean, some of the most saddest movies that I'll ever cry on are like The Joy Luck Club from Amy Tan. Um, oh my god, that movie is so sad. But it's such a good film. If you haven't seen it, I recommend seeing The Joy Luck Club. But it is rated R, so make sure that you are old enough to watch it. Um, I've cried in a lot of episodes of The Golden Girls. Oh my god, my absolute favorite season. And going back to The Helpless Romantic, I love a lot of the episodes from I Love Lucy when Ricky and Lucy in the few episodes that you just see the true love of how they both were in that series and, and in real life. So I just love being, um, not that I love being sad, but sometimes I feel that the soul needs to purify itself. And by doing that, I feel that crying is one way. Crying purifies the soul. So I always, sometimes I'll watch a movie to, um, not to become sad, but it's just something that I like to do to constantly remind myself that I am an emotional person and that's okay. You're absolutely fine if you are an emotional person. There's nothing wrong with it. And just like with other movies, let's see, I've cried in a lot of Disney movies. I cried in Toy Story 3 and Toy Story 4. I cried in The Fox and the Hound. Oh my gosh. When Todd is left, oh, that scene kills me. Just kills me. But I am an emotional person and that's totally fine. You have to be connected with your feelings and there's nothing wrong with that. So if you guys did not know this, my husband is a makeup artist and hair stylist and he has been doing that for a long time i met him while he was doing that and he also has his full-time job as a market research analyst and he's working his butt off to earn his mba and i am excited because i'm going to be wearing a costume for the housewarming party and my husband is gonna be something different. We were kind of debating whether or not to do like a couple's costume, which I was okay with, but we ended up just doing our own. So I am excited for you guys to see that. Now, unfortunately, you won't be able to see it in this episode, but it will be coming out after the Halloween party because I will be showing you guys that as well. And you'll be able to see the costume I wear. So, taken from the vault. This is my husband's makeup line alongside with his friend. They both are the owners and creators of this company. Jogia Cosmetics. And it's just amazing how they've made products and are selling. They have been in a few expos, which I have been to. Um, just a few weeks ago, we were at Quinceañera Expo in Ontario. That was really amazing. We had a lot of turnout. And we had a lot of good sales and just really good exposure for their product. If you guys are interested in checking out my husband's line, I'll go ahead and leave a link at the description below and check them out. 
Next time on Casa Hernandez, things get spookier. And my husband helps in creating my makeup look for my Halloween costume. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Want to stay in the know of what happens next in Casa Hernandez? Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification button so you know when our next episode comes out. Also, like, comment, or ask any questions that you may have about me or my husband or about our lives. And we'll gladly answer any questions that come our way. Thanks again for watching.